this is William K. Murtaugh, Mart Witness One. And today I'm going to talk about trolling for attention and busted. And I'm going to discuss the busted part first because this is kind of an indicator as to what would lead into the second part as to how these trolls who are so desperate for attention that they tell the most outrageous lies that one can think of uh, plays out. Now, I was doing my inspection of certain social media accounts, uh, one blog in particular, when a truly remarkable story showed up. Now, the claim is that um, outgoing President Donald Trump issued some kind of an order and people are being arrested and that president-elect Joe Biden has turned in his passport. Now, of course, Twitter deleted it, so they say, and nobody on the mainstream media is, is reporting it. Not Fox, not the major networks, not even Newsmax is reporting this little story. Nobody is, except this weird little WordPress blog run by someone who claims to be the press secretary for something, and I'll get into more on why I call it something, uh, on the internet. Now, The problem with this particular story is that it is so easily debunked that it, yeah, it, it seems hardly worth mentioning. But it's so blatant and so common with this guy that I just decided I'd point it out. And it, again, this is going to morph into the second half of my mobile sign here. Now, they put up a picture of a man with a bunch of FBI agents around him and he was being shoved into a bus or something. Van, bus, but he was under arrest. And I did my usual research that I do when tracking these stories down and lo and behold, it's another stolen image. Uh, it was yanked off a story about corrupt policemen that got arrested in a drug deal. You know, and that was basically it. And the story went way back to 2017. And, you know, a tweet went up. It's by Donald Trump, supposedly, a day or two ago. And, you know, obviously when you examine the tweet, it's clear that it's faked. Uh, they used another tweet and simply re-edited it. This is so common. Um, spoof, spoofs of Trump's account have been made for years using the same technique. You know, it's a, you know, a, a second grader could do this. But the audience for these people are stupid enough to believe this crap. And so they get away with it. But there it is, folks. There's the original story. There's the blogger's version of the story. There's proof of the fact that this story didn't exist. You know, the proof is in your lap again. That these people are liars, they're frauds, they're fakes. They're not who they say they are. And they're simply out desperate for attention and desperate for money. Because that's the bottom line here. This is about money. And this is part of what happened on, last night on my murderthon. Now, the usual people showed up. 
and started their little game, you know, asking about what kind of a car does Levi drive, who's paying tuition, who's doing this, who's doing that. Like it's the most important thing in the world. I don't understand what the deal is about if somebody is paying somebody's tuition and what kind of a car they drive. You know, and anybody that wants to find out what kind of a car he drives, all they have to do is look at his social media page. He's talked about the car. I used to sell the damn things. Exact make and model. Maybe not the same year, but close enough. It's a common car. Kids his age drive these things. You know, they're not bad cars. I prefer different make. But this troll seemed to be real interested in the kind of car this guy drives and calling him all kinds of names and claiming that he's jealous of this blogger who will not show his face in public anymore. You know, and all this nonsense. And they know they're lying. Everybody on the chat knows they're lying. But they do it anyway. Because... They are out to disrupt the chat. They are out to disrupt my live stream. Because that's the only thing they're capable of doing. They can't do anything on their own except these ridiculous stories that everybody knows is false. You know, but I guess it's the same reason people buy the Weekly World News or the National Enquirer. They like reading about shit that's not true. And they like to, you know, I used to buy the Enquirer to do the jigsaw puzzles, crossword puzzles. You know, the, the Enquirer and the Globe, which is another fake news site, you know, used to sell crosswords in the paper. And so I'd buy it for the crosswords. Because the nice thing about that is in the in the back pages they give you the you know if you can't do solve the puzzle they give you they give you the answers so you can go through and fill them out you know see how close you came to getting the answers. But nowadays you know you can get the puzzles online and there's other things to do so you don't need you know the crossword puzzles is something that's kind of a fad of the past so to speak. But. You know, these people just can't see that they're making absolute fools of themselves. But let me move on here a little bit. Now, one of the things that came out, and this is how I know it's all about money, is that the trolls claim that I am jealous because the... Conspiracy theorists and this PPT app are making more money than I do. This was kind of a slip on their part because they're just admitting it's about money. It's all about money. Because why would they make such a stimulus? Why would they say, oh, we make more money than you do? I wasn't under the impression that saving children from uh, criminal criminals, both political and lay people, has anything to do with money. And here's another thing about this money thing. Now remember, they say that this guy is making more money than me or anybody else and that the PPT app is making more money than anybody else, and the PPT app is paying his salary. So another thing that came up is there are people that have accused this one person in particular of possibly being a pedophile based on his actions and his writings. You know, in this same individual has accused me of being a pedophile, accused me of being a child trafficker, accused me of being a domestic terrorist, and he's done this to others. And they, these people got their burr up and ass, up their asses, so they say, 
about the same thing being done to him. Since, you know, even though he's the one that started all this in the first place, and there's actually more evidence to back our contention than there is for him to back his. But, you know, with all this saying, yeah, we're paying for his car, we're paying for this, we're paying for that, then they come out and say, well, Timmy can't get a job. What do you mean he can't get a job? He's already got a job. He's the press secretary for the Pentagon Pedophile Task Force. Yeah, but you put all those accusations out there, and when they do uh, social media searches, all this bad stuff about him come up, and he can't get a job. Uh, but he works for the Pentagon Pedophile Task Force. The Pentagon Pedophile Task Force is paying him. Why does he need another job? I mean, working for the government pays good money. Especially a press secretary. A press secretary for the White House makes over 150000 a year. He needs more than that kind of money. Yeah, but you put all that stuff up on social media and he can't get a job. Yeah, and this is the kind of things they say. And then the next sentence, the very next sentence, he's living on a lake somewhere in Texas, Louisiana border, running around in a paddle boat and enjoying the swamp. Or this lake. You know, and he's going to move to Texas. You know, and this goes on for a while, this back and forth about, you know, him being over there running around on a paddle boat, enjoying himself. And a little bit later, lo and behold, he's on assignment at Fort Bragg. So he's at Fort Bray, and yet he's over in this lake in a paddle boat. You know, I, you know, explain that one. Explain how a guy who's, be, you know, over on this lake in Texas and Louisiana is on assignment in Fort Bragg in the Carolinas. And here's another thing. Now, remember, they said that this guy cannot get a job because of the problems that it's on the Internet, all these accusations. This guy apparently passed a background check, FBI background check, to do some unknown thing on Fort Bragg. And yet, because of the stuff that's put on social media, this guy can't get a job. Now... Where, when do people wake up and realize that these people are full of shit? Because, you know, they can't keep their story straight. You know, they say stuff on the internet for the sake of saying it. Because they know there's going to be somebody out there that's going to believe what they say and they're going to send them the money. Because in the end, this is all this trolling is about. It's about the money. They don't care if it's the truth or not. They just want to generate the cash. They want to get people believing that this guy is genuine, that he is part of something important, so that the money will come flowing in. Because people are headline readers. I learned this when I wrote my blog. They don't go past the headline. They say, oh, they see this headline professionally laid out by someone that seems to know that there, you know, that there's things going on in the deep state and blah, 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 blah. And they know how to create convincing propaganda. Just like they did in the Third Reich. And so everybody gets caught up in the headline and they say, oh my God, look at what's going on and this guy's revealing the truth and all this. And they don't bother to go beyond reading the headline. They don't go and double check and take the five or ten minutes it would take to run down 
the fact that this is a completely fake story. You know, and it's, uh, people like me do it. We spend the time to do it, and it doesn't do any good because you're not going to convince these people. You know, they're going to believe in what they believe. You know, that's the one thing people need to understand when, when you understand why this has to be done on a daily basis where you fight these lies because people are so embedded in their beliefs that it doesn't matter what these people say everybody believes it because if you admit that these people are liars about what they say then you have to Understand that you can't rely on anything that they say or anybody around them says. You know, when you see this Biden story, you're going to believe it if you don't like Biden because if you don't believe the story about Biden, then you have to admit that probably everything that's been said about Biden in a negative fashion is also a lie. This is this is the hook, folks. People seem to think you can't think something good of your opponent. That there is some good about your opponent. Even though you may not like his politics. And so you're going to believe everything negative that's said about him. This is propaganda that's been going on for decades. And it works. It's an all or nothing thing. You're either going to believe everything about your opponent or you're not going to believe anything about it. Even if it's the truth, you're not going to believe anything. And this is the power that we have given these kind of propaganda artists, these conspiracy nuts. Is we have given these people the power to control the narrative. And they're ripping us off because of it. Because if you go to the blog in question, you're going to see that there are at least three ways to donate money to his cause. To donate money so that he can have a paddle boat on a swamp in Texas and Louisiana. Man doesn't need a job. He's living off the skirts of a woman in Minnesota, number one. You know, she pays all his expenses. She owns his blog. She owns virtually all the social media accounts. He has access to them, but she owns them all. She's admitted it. And if proof is ever needed, the letter is out there that she wrote to YouTube appealing a takedown notice she put right on there I own the blog I own the YouTube channel I own this I own that she admitted to all of it so this Clark Kent person of the conspiracy world doesn't own a damn thing doesn't even own his name anymore even that's fake Little known fact is that he was born and given a name other than the one he uses now. Nobody cares about that. They just care that the this guy doesn't like Biden. Everybody, this guy loves Trump. Worships Trump. So we got to worship him because he worships Trump. And he hates Biden. Now there's probably some Biden people out there that are the same way. That, you know, they're going to hate the other side for the sake of hate. Not because of any differences of opinion. But that's where we are here. Now people ask me, why don't I talk about them? Well, it's because I have a direct connection to these people. And anybody that knows me long enough knows it well. That 
this particular blogger has been lying about me, attacking me for years. And the sole reason that I talk about him is because of the attacks he makes against me and others. An increasing number of others, as a matter of fact. And this desperate housewife from Minnesota jumped on the bandwagon because she needs the attention. She's trolling for the dollars. Trolling for attention. She's in a broken marriage. She's the pariah of the area she lives in. And so the internet is the only way that she can get out there and be important, be somebody. She can't do it on her own, so she has to go out and lie about it. She goes out and joins these outer space fringe groups talking about lizard people and fish people and shoes on trees and non-existent children in non-existent caves and constantly talking about men in their underwear and what kind of cars they drive and deriding people that live in mobile homes and demanding to see pictures of the inside of people's houses. That's what's important to these people. Not missing and exploited children. Not one word was said about missing and exploited children on my chat last night by these people. Not one word. And another word that was not spoken, not one single word, is what happened to one of their own who was murdered. There's a woman in jail. 70 miles from where I'm at right now for the murder of one of their colleagues one of the keynotes to their movement they don't talk about that oh they did a little while back they came up with this convoluted conspiracy theory about this guy being a defense contractor and he was going to expose this massive conspiracy and they caught him and somehow got Someone to shoot the guy in his house and then, you know, they, oh, they fake the police report or they frame this poor woman that's in jail and you know, all this nonsense. And this, this clearly points out that these people do not give a damn about Chris Hallett. Chris Hallett's nothing more than a key to another conspiracy theory. They can exploit his death For the attention they so desire, that they're desperate for. They could get just as much attention if they were to talk about the truth behind what happened to this guy than lying about it. But telling the truth isn't as much fun. They can't exploit as much money if they talk about the truth of why this guy was murdered. So they come up with convoluted conspiracy theories about this man's death. I don't know how much the family of this man sees of all this nonsense that's going on and the fact that these people are making a joke out of its death and that the very woman who was the witness to the murder and who has now taken over his company and his cause, such as it is, is now being named is somehow suspect in the murder. And she may, in fact, have had something to do with it and that the woman in jail for the murder is, in fact, a scapegoat. But that's how these people work. They see something that they can exploit, make money off it, in National Enquirer fashion, and they jump to it. And the man's family is left to suffer for it. You know, no talk about paying for a funeral, no talk about helping the family out, just saying he was a defense contractor that was part of some big international conspiracy. And this is another thing that you might note about these mysterious people that show up on these various 
social media accounts, and that is they never use their real name. They come in as task force, task force international, uh, the high command, uh, weird usernames that are clearly fake. Um, one username that was used last night was a sexual reference, which I thought was rather interesting. And it's, you know, it's clearly obvious what they're doing because if you ban them, they just come in, they either change their email address to log into YouTube, or they change their username and come in with another email account. I don't know if they make these accounts in advance or they make them on the fly, but it's like as fast as you ban one, another one shows up. You know, and it's kind of funny when you're in a room where 30 people are participating in the chat that 29 of them are trolls. A little exaggeration. It actually works out to, I have an average of three to five trolls a night that actively chat with this kind of nonsense. The rest of the people are good, decent people that know the rules and respect each other. And there's people in these rooms that have political differences, but we set our political uh, differences aside to discuss this crap that goes on with these trolls. But, we are roughly 30 some days from January 20th. This is December 19th. And, like it or not, we are going to have a new president of the United States. Because there is no way that he can legally remain in office. Now, we could have a revolution where the Proud Boys and some of these other weird gatherings start going around shooting people. But is that any way to run a country? To have these armed bandits running around shooting people up like they do over in Russia or down in Mexico or in other countries throughout the world? We used to be the one country where we could have a peaceful transition of power you know, changing political perspectives without people having to shoot each other. That message seems to be gone. It's it's now, whoever's got the most guns wins the election. That seems to be where we're going now. You know, and I hope that this is not a road that people want to travel down. Because if this is what we're turning into as a country, then we're finished. This country's not worth living in. Now, if we can't have a peaceful transition of power based on the public will, then we are finished as a country. Then we're just like everybody else. Most everybody else. We're just like Russia. We're just like China. We're just like North Korea. And so on down the road. You know, if this is what you people want, then join QAnon. Join the Proud Boys. Get out your guns and shoot the opposition dead. But it's kind of a empty accomplishment when the bodies are buried and the blood is cleaned up. Because then you have to live with what you've done. You have to live with the hell you've created. And then somebody out, somebody's going to realize that, oh, if they can take guns, shoot people spill the blood and make the mess to take power, we can do the same thing and we'll do it again. This is what gave rise to the Third Reich. This is what gave rise to the Russian Revolution. And so on. This is how China was created. It was created with guns and blood. This is how Cuba was created. It was created with guns and blood. So this is what you want, folks. Go out and get the guns and spill some blood. You know, the hell with the ballot box, the hell with elections, the hell with the electoral college. You know, if you want to come into office as the next president of the United States, just grab a gun and start shooting. That's what QAnon wants. That's what the Proud Boys want. That's what the KKK wants. That's what all these groups want. And right there in the middle of it all is this little blogger up there in Minnesota going around saying that Biden lost his passport. 
by the orders of Trump. This is the kind of garbage you want to believe in? Knock yourself out. But when you wake up, after the dust settles, and the change you wanted has taken place, just remember the adage, be careful what you wish for. You just may get it. This is William K. Murtaugh, Mert Witness 1. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and have a good one.